a very warm welcome to everyone. I'm thrilled to welcome one of the most famous names of our photography industry, Mr. Martin Graham Dunn, and UK's leading event photographer, Mr. Simon Coates. Martin has been in this industry for over three decades and is one of the leading photography tutors and mentor. He has mentored thousands of photographers right across the globe. And despite his recent health problems, he still goes out of his way to help other fellow photographers. Simon runs Simon Coates Photography and is based in rugby. He covers major events around the UK and uses cutting edge technology to provide an except, exceptional level of service and experience to his clients. Welcome, gentlemen. Good morning. Uh, morning, morning, Oz. <laughs> How are you guys? You okay? <laughs> <laughs> I well, didn't appreciate the th over three decades. The uh, always. <laughs> oh, was it? Be right. Was it called an elder statesman? Um, let's bring in Simon now. So you guys were invited to attend JITEX, which is one of the major photography conventions in the Middle East. It, so, it's not a photography um, convention. It was it was billed locally as oh, okay. Geek Week. Okay. And. Um, HEPA had a stand, stand in the government yeah. hall. Brilliant. So, Simon, how did this job come about and what was your experience? Oh, the job came about through, um, I had a phone call on a Wednesday morning at about 8 o'clock from Martin, who was at the time running a training course in Spain, I think it was. Yeah. yeah. And he, he put me on standby and said, um, we might need you in Dubai um, oh. on Saturday. Uh, I say this was on the Wednesday. He then <laughs> rang me at um, sort of noon yeah. on Wednesday and said, "Yeah, it's definitely on. Um, the, the, the chauffeur will come and pick you up at um, midday on um, Saturday." Yeah. And so it was then a bit of a mad panic to um, get everything sorted. Uh, I, I got three jobs on that weekend as well, which I then hastily had to uh, find cover for. Yeah. Um, and had to get in uh, oh so much paper. We we took we took 110 kilos of luggage with us, mainly paper. Um, and it was yeah, it was frantic, absolutely frantic. We we, we got to Dubai at I, th I think we got to the hotel at about half past three in the morning on the Sunday, and the show started at ten the Sunday morning. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, nothing like leaving it to the last minute. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, so when you got the go ahead from Martin, obviously the logistics, I know when you're traveling overseas um, to take all the kit with you, what did you take with you? The kit, I mean, we, we took, um, I, I, I was traveling light. Yeah. Um, I only took um, my, my trusty die sub printer with me and a laptop and a backdrop stand and um, six boxes of media. Um, two green screen backdrops, lots of yeah. cables, um, yeah. chargers, and all that good stuff. Yeah. It, it was it was somewhat nerve wracking, um, having to plan in advance and not being able to say, "Oh drat, I've lost something in the van. I'll just make oh. it up and pick it up out of the van." Yeah. So it, 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 uh, and because as I say, um, I'd got three jobs on that weekend, I'd had to make sure that. I was leaving all the right bits of kit here for those jobs and the kit that I needed with me um, so that we could cover both jobs simultaneously. Yeah, cool. Now, Martin, I believe this was one of your very first experiences as an event photographer. Now, many photographers wow. consider event photography like any monkey with a camera and a printer can do it. What was yeah. the experience like? Okay, well... Clarifying that, obviously, I had a, a lab and a business back in, in Warwick um, for many years, and yes, uh, I did events, but that was that was shoot and print events because this was before digital photography. You know, back in the time when we used to use proper cameras and roll yeah, film. Play, and, uh, play cameras. Yeah, that's the ones. That's the ones. Yeah, and uh, basically take the film, you know, shoot the stuff, run back to the lab process and print it, take the prints back and sell off the table. Um, so basically, you know, I had experience of other events, but not, not you know, latter day events, you know, contemporary stuff now where everything's done digitally and, and it's, it's literally, it is 
on demand. Um, so in terms of the photographic skills needed, well, nothing's changed. But in terms of of uh, management of an event, yeah, uh, uh, on, on the workflow side, I think much has changed. I mean, that's that's what really hit me hard. And and I think I said on a few forums and and, and publicly afterwards that I really don't like people knocking event photographers. It's not right. You get a lot of of um, photographers from other walks of life. The, Fit to have a dig at events, guys, and, and yeah. um, complain about their skills and whatever. But you know what? They've probably got more skills than a lot of social photographers. Mm. Number one, the one skill that's absolutely essential is man management skills. They know how to talk to people. Yeah. They know how to communicate with clients, and they know, most importantly, how to get a sale there and then. They don't get a sale there and then. That's their livelihood. You yeah. know, and, and, and it's all very well to be take a high high horse stance and. And look down on, on event photographers, and I really didn't think that's um, that's appropriate. So yeah, I mean, for me, it was um, it, it wasn't a culture shock in as much as how, how hard it, hard work it was. It was it was um, nothing more than I expected to do. I've always been used to working yeah. at speed. I've yeah. never not worked at speed. I'm just one of those sort of guys that likes to work quickly. Yeah. But the the great thing was that you know Simon and I made a really good team. I mean, he his IT skills and his his skills with with the software. Now he's going to tell you something. He's a little monkey. This one, by the way. I'll tell you. Uh, he'll talk to you about Photo Key Pro Five, five Pro. Yeah. Soon. And, uh, and and because obviously, from my point of view, um, I didn't want to simply light it. You know, I wanted to change lighting throughout, depending on who had got in front of me, which is a bit of a no-no to to event photographers. I think they like to have stability. Yeah. And one of the concerns that I had was what would happen with green screening um, if certain areas had more shadow than others. But And Simon just absolutely confidently reassured me that uh, everything would be fine and it would be marvelous. And he was a you know, leading light in this stuff. I'm teasing you, Simon. Yeah. But, but he'd actually he just installed it into his machine, so you've got to watch him. He is a wee monkey. And, uh, but it, it did perform. I'm sure Simon will tell you about it. But... Uh, and that to have somebody with that level of, of technical backup, yeah, as a part of a complete team, and it is teamwork. You can't, it is. you can't easily do these things on your own because you know you're managing people um, who speak different languages. Yeah, um, you know, I heard at least five different languages while we're there. Um, six if you count my bad language occasionally yeah. when people join us. Yeah, Anglo-Saxon. Uh, yeah. Anglo-Saxon. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it was it was it was interesting, and, and to actually get people workflow through, we weren't given the easiest spot to work in, um, which which didn't help. Um, we weren't given uh, a table. No, oh. we didn't have a table. So, <laughs> so we we actually made a table by draping the spare green screen that we've got with us over the top of the media boxes, and Simon literally hmm. stood at that all day while I stood there. And uh, and took pictures, but I was trying to get other things done as well. You know, yeah. talking to people, meeting people. So you know, I, I didn't actually know I was going to go there and shoot a lot of pictures, to be honest. Okay. Uh, so um, it, that's the way it was. But you know, and the beauty of the thing of um, of working with HEPA yeah. is that you have to deal with the unexpected as well as the expected. Yeah. Uh, and they are a very demanding organisation. To be honest, that's also um, the hallmark of an event photographer is having to be able to deal with the the unexpected, getting to a venue, not getting what you expect or what you've been promised, yeah, and having to um, still do a professional job under um, trying circumstances. Yeah. Let yeah. me bring in Simon now. Simon, this image on the on your screen right now is a perfect example of a person wearing green in front of a green yes. screen. That's right. <laughs> let's let's talk a little bit about that. You know, this is brilliant. Uh, the way it has been photographed and the 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 software, the Photo Key Five Pro looks really good. It is. Um, the the thing that I didn't tell Martin. Um, I, I I have a fair amount of experience in doing green screen events, but um, I was never overly happy with the green screen software that I was using. I, I was using uh, Express Digital Darkroom. Yeah. Um, and the green screen on that works, but it's a little temperamental. You, you have to get the lighting absolutely perfect. Now, 
I had no worries with Martin getting the lighting perfect. He just didn't necessarily gonna light my background perfectly. Um, and so I thought I needed something different. So I I got Photo Key Five. Uh, I tested it um, an hour after Martin booked me to do the job, and <laughs> yeah, and uh, that's like we, we te I tested it for an hour. Decided yeah, it's it's brilliant. It's, it's, it's mm. incredibly. Um, forgiving bit of software. Yeah. Now let me uh, stop you for a second, Simon, because you talk about perfect lighting, and um, I've got a couple of people asking the same question. What do you mean by perfect lighting? Is it even lighting right across? Uh, no, hell no. Not to me, it isn't. Maybe it is to Sai, but to me, you got to light the subject. Yes. Um, what, from my point of view, for, um, for we're doing... talking about green screen lighting the yeah. background. Yeah, for green screen, I don't care how the subject is lit. Yeah. Um, it can be lit as moodily as you like. Yeah. What What I need for a good key is an even light on the backdrop. Okay. I, d I don't want um, substantial shadows on the backdrop, but okay. photo key is very very forgiving. Um, and copes remarkably well. What I mean, what you can't see on this shot is the fact that the, the backdrop that I'd taken out there that we were using was a, a three meter by three meter uh, cloth backdrop that I'd bought off eBay for I think about fourteen quid. Yeah. And it was as creased as anything. And ordinarily, that even having creases in your background yeah. can cause problems. Yeah. But um, photo key do, didn't. The other thing is that ideally, when you're working with green screen, you want to be able to have almost around about six foot of separation between the subject and the backdrop to try and wow. cut down on the green spill. Well, that's a, quite a luxury to have at an event. <laughs> It is. That's exactly right. And I mean, we had a three meter by three meter stand mm. upon which we had a three meter motorbike. Yeah. Um, and as I say, the, the software is it, it, it is mind blowingly good. I mean, this shot, this shot that you've got here with the girl with the green top on. Yeah. It didn't key that um, correctly. And what you can see on there at the moment is the, the green lines and the green boxes were a mask that I created within the software. Okay. And it took about about twelve seconds to create the mask. Yeah. Um, and bring that back to the uh, the foreground. Yeah. And it's it's great. So how how many lights do you usually use to light the background? Couple of lights, one on either side? when when I'm working and I mean uh, Martin, can you just unplug this for a moment so you don't hear me say this? Um, I, I use two soft boxes at 45 degrees, and one of them is set so that it's predominantly missing the subject, if possible, and yeah. is there just to, to light the background. Yeah. Um, occasionally, depending if you've, if I've got enough space, I'll add um, a third light to act as a as a hair light. Coming in from the back diagonal. Yeah. Um, but as I say, that it, it all depends um, okay. on what what space we've got available. Yeah. And the answer is never enough. Enough. Yeah. Never have enough space. So, um, as someone starting in green screen, what would you advise the basics of or having a good green screen setup? Um, my view on, on all these things is is keep it simple. Yeah. Um, we, when we were doing this job, um, we kept it as, as simple as possible. We, we kept it slightly too simple for my liking. Um, my background in, in IT, um, I, I always, I'm always of the opinion that no matter what the problem, uh, it can be solved by throwing more IT at it. Um, yeah. and realistically, I would much prefer to have been able to do this event wirelessly yeah. so that the images went straight through. Yeah. Um, but the environment didn't lend itself to that. There was just too many networks for my wireless to work. Yeah. Um, so keeping it simple, uh, two lights, simple green backdrop, 
and um, a, a decent bit of green screen software. And of course, if you're doing events, um, a die sub printer of some flavor. You always recommend a die sub printer? Always. Don't, don't ever, ever try and do an event with anything other than a die sublimation printer. Yeah. Um, they, anything else is too slow, too expensive, and not, the quality is not good enough. Good enough. We've got a question from Barry. Um, how much does the green screen software slow down your workflow or does it enhance your or speed up your workflow? Um, I, I think the honest answer to that is it doesn't slow it down at all as long as um, you've got the lighting right. Yeah. Um, I mean, we, to give you some idea of the, the throughput that we had through the system. Yeah. We did the show for five, five days, and in those five days, we did 1,314 prints. Wow. These were 12 by 8 prints, yeah. and I had a single printer. So um, the, the the workflow, the speed of the software, yeah. is just so quick. Yeah. Um, it was the, the bottleneck was printing. Mm. Oh, really? Even though the die subs are very, very fast. Yes, that's right. Um, we were, I mean, we, we had people queuing for an hour to have their picture taken on this on this bike. Mm. Um, and we just couldn't print quick enough. I could have done with um, four die subs out there with me. Wow. Um, and so the, the software, as long as... Um, I mean, M Martin was a bugger for changing the lighting. Um, <laughs> and well, I've got a shot on screen at the moment, which, which you know, basically you've got three guys. Well, I was going to say that, yeah, yeah. Police K9 unit, all wearing baseball caps. You can't yeah. have your height, lights at the, no. the height to accommodate no. what you do. So you're moving the height of the light, the angle of the light. You've got a dog in there. Yeah. And uh, I mean, that was that was absolutely hilarious. I mean, you know, some of my American friends. You know, asked whether this K9 unit was for real, and I did say that, uh, as you can see, you know, Fido here has got his hands on the handlebars, which are these two swords, and I explained that these dogs are trained to leap off this bike at speed into the back of a convertible and arrest the suspect, and they believe me, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but yeah. you've got to be, you've got to be flexible when it comes to the, to the. I mean, from my point of view, I see it a different way to way Cy sees it. I mean, it. Uh, and his, with, with his IT background, and maybe that's not very fair on him, but my idea was, well, I'm going to light what I need to light here. You sort out the rest. Yeah, well, that, 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 that's fine. I mean, I, I have no problem with that. It does. But it does. One thing you can see here, science side knows, is that because it was His Highness motorbike, it's an Orange County chopper, and, and as size told you, three meters long, it's massive, and weighs a ton. Yeah. Because it's his bike, what happened, there's a red carpet underneath, and you can see the reflection of the red. Um, on on a lot of the stainless on, on a lot of the chrome work and the stainless steel. So you know, uh, and of course we, we didn't have the ability to to green screen the whole bike. If I mean, Last of Light now have their wonderful uh, wrap around green screen unit, and if, if yeah. it had been ready in time, you know, I, I would have had Keith Sanderson of Last of Light make sure I got one of those to take with us, and we'd have put a green screen on the floor yeah. and done the whole thing. But um, you know, as it is, needs must. Mm. Uh, yeah. And you cope, you know, you have to cope. Mm. Martin, I mean, right. can I come to you, uh, being a social photographer and never ventured into events, were you quite shocked as to what the technology can do all, and also the skill of the photographer uh, needed to produce, you know, high quality prints at lightning speed? Let, let, let's be honest, I mean, a photographer is a photographer, Oz. I mean, my, my philosophy, you know, my background, I mean, you know my background, it's, it's advertising, commercial fashion, whatever, and, and the social side came much later. But, you know, if you're a photographer, you've got to deal with whatever's in front of you. That's, that's the way it is. That's what we should be trying to do. What, what, I have admiration for all of these guys that do this week in, week yeah. out, at speed, and, and they have to have a strong reliance yeah. on the IT, yeah. uh, and, and it is, it's almost like a blind faith in it, and, and um, I, 
and, and, and that in itself is abnormal. I've got to say, I am so majorly impressed with the green screen software yeah. that um, you know I, I see I see a lot of other yeah. uh, uses for it, and and I would love to see event photographers. Uh, branching to do one or two other things they probably already do yeah. um, but maximizing the use of the green screen yeah. uh, we had the opportunity I mean one of the one of the things out there was that Simon and I really were trying to demonstrate to some small groups um, what this stuff can do yeah. both photographically and IT wise and output wise everything from uh, the green screen software itself to yeah. the, the die sub printer outputs and, and the media yeah. Uh, so, so we were we were there really working in the interests of, of photography, the, yep. the dice sub manufacturers and suppliers, and everybody really. So, so it was a learning thing, and, and of course the objective was that we wanted to make sure as many people as possible were given a, an image with the compliments of HIPAA um, to the attendees yep. uh, as a as an aid memoir. And yep. you can see that uh, we did change. And, and so I'll tell you about the overlays because I was quite. I used to give him a hard time about the overlays every day, and we yep. change the overlays every day. It would have been all right if it, if we'd only change the overlays every day. Mm. But Martin would get, come along and say, "Oh no, no, let's change it again now." Yeah. Okay. Um, it's a fair cop. All right, so yeah. 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 But I wanted a QR code on there so that they could. We, we wanted to see, you know, if it was a QR code and it was actually on a 12A yeah. pixel print in the proportion to see whether it would scan correctly. It was perfect. Yeah. So everything. Good. Everything cool. is good. Uh, Simon, let me ask you a question with regards to green screen. Not about the technology side of things. I mean, I know it has been very big in the US for a long, long time. Has it yeah. caught up in the UK now? Are people demanding green screen at events? And especially at corporate events, how do you brand and use green screen uh, to um, offer it as a service? <laughs> We find at events that a green screen is either a huge success or an abject failure. <laughs> really? <laughs> um, that it, um, we, we do um, a, a fair amount of uh, covering murder mystery evenings and things like that, and they're always themed. Um, and we did a, a Rocky Horror themed murder mystery at yeah. Halloween. Yeah. Um, and. Green screen went down an absolute storm there because everybody dressed in fancy dress, sure. and we were able to put in um, suitably silly backdrops. Yeah. But at, at other events, um, I, I, I don't know at the moment that I would want to use green screen at a black tie ball or something like that. Yeah. But I, at, at those sort of events, I think that. Um, it's a bit of a stretch uh, for the uh, customers to understand what it is that the green screen is doing. Mm. I think that there's almost um, a generational uh, thing that the older generation would look at it and think, I don't have my photograph taken against such a hideously green backdrop. Yeah. And th th they can't make the, the connection that actually you won't have that green backdrop, it will be replaced with something sensible. Yeah. What, what I love about green screen um, and the reason why I'm determined that more and more of my business will be green screen based is that as an event photographer at um, parties and balls and, and proms and so on, the biggest hurdle that I face now are people with their mobile phones and their own little pocket cameras. Sure. Um, and I need to be able to produce something that they can't, can't do yeah. or unlikely to do. Yeah. Green screen gives me that ability. Um, they can, sure enough, they can photograph their mates over my shoulder yeah. and they'll have a photograph against them against, or of them against a hideously green backdrop. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, 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 they will only get the, the, the correct product yeah. um, from you by buying it from me. Yeah. Now, obviously, getting the right background image is also very important because it could make or break an image. How yes. do you source that? Do you buy stock images or you get bespoke images created for your events? Um, for me, it, it varies. I've, I've 
uh, licensed stock images for the um, for the murder mystery one, the the, the, the Rocky Horror one. Yeah. Um, we were using um, cartoony style backgrounds rather than photographs. Yeah. Um, so that it was more sort of Scooby Doo than, than anything. Hmm. Um, and that that worked really well. In the case of the 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 Heaper job, we were using um, photographs of Dubai that had been winners, um, I believe, in last they're, year's. They've just been placed. You know, they're, they're oh, they've the, been placed. Okay, yeah. Yeah, they were in the book, and I just had access to what I could get hold of, and we have permission to use it. So. Oh, okay. Um, and the f for me, the key to making it work is. Um, ensuring that the lighting on the subject is sympathetic to the lighting on the background. Yeah. Um, that it, it's no good having um, dramatic lighting coming from one direction on the background and then it not being lit the same yeah. in the foreground. It looks horrendously fake. Yeah. I've got a couple of questions regarding the actual cost of the setup. How much investment is required to get up and running as an event photographer. Okay, we, we, we often um, at events when the, the printers are running flat out um, and we, we, we're taking um, what appears to be good money, we quite often get people say to us, oh, you guys have got a license to print money. Yes. Um, it's, a, it's a fairly widely held misconception. And the, there are times when, when I'm faced with that and I'll say to a client, yeah, and for the £20,000 that it's cost me for my license, I'm quite happy to sell it to you tonight. Yeah. Um, it's a very difficult question to answer. Um, you can do it moderately cheaply. Um, theoretically, all you need is um, a laptop, a printer, um, and so a, die sub, a good quality die sub printer um, if you're doing 12 eights, you're, you're looking at somewhere around about 1,600 quid for a printer. Yeah. Um, 300 quid for a laptop. Um, 200 quid for the software. Uh, whatever you want to spend on your lights. Um, and the background. Yeah, and, and as I say, the, the backdrop stand. As I say, the, the the cloth backdrop that I was using um, was a was a cheap and nasty from eBay, and it performed brilliantly. Yeah. Um, Realistically, now I would um, I, I I've moved over now to using the the shiny new panoramic backdrop from yep. um, from Last Delight, which yep. I think is incredible. Yep. Um, yeah. Four, four, four meters wide, self standing, absolutely perfect. Yeah. Um, so, it would have made life easier, wouldn't it, Sai? Because there were there were there were situations where. People were being less than careful, and they were kicking the background continually and moving it out of position. And, and there's much time spent in going and putting things right, and yet the new blaster light background it just negates any of those problems whatsoever. So, so there is a there is a balance between getting kit getting the kit right and and, and economy, but it is an expensive setup. Yeah. It really not not comparatively with with other things. You know, I've, I've got a very good question from Kelly. Do you shoot JPEGs or RAW? JPEGs. And how do you transfer? <laughs> and how do you transfer? Is it tethered? Yeah. Um, at, 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 at every event that I do, other than the um, the Jitex, um in Dubai, I shoot wirelessly. Okay. Um, so that. <laughs> The images go straight from the camera and straight onto um, the viewing system. Yeah. Um, because we don't want um, people to wait. Um, the, the, the people, on, on the whole, the human race is an impatient race. Of course. And they don't like waiting. Yeah. Um, if you if you get a card swap, um, then it you just got to be efficient. You got to be efficient. That's all, isn't it, Sam? Yeah. Yes. We found a system. We found a system. I mean, I, I would say, to be honest, um, that that it's really important here that, that you've got to find what works with you. So I said earlier on, we had 50 networks in our hall. There was not a prayer of uh, of actually doing it 
um, well, you know, one. Well, no. Not only that, the tethered, yeah. the, the tethered from a health and safety point of view, where we were situated, was just a no-go. You know, we'd have had we had people tripping out. Or, or yeah, Martin would have tripped it over and pulled my laptop <laughs> off the table and all sorts. Yeah. <laughs> it wouldn't have worked. So, so really, the other thing is, I, what I would say from my perspective, rather than size, I think the card swap work well in this this arena and would work well in other ones because yeah. um, th there's one word I hate above all in photography, and that's chimping. Because I mean, <laughs> idiot that term. <laughs> Simon, you will get pies thrown at you in case you're not. Oh, scared. good. But, um, <laughs> but you know, if you're trying to shoot one for one, I, what I didn't want Simon to have to do is to make a decision of choosing between image one, two, three, four, five, no. six of the same damn person. So to me, I would check, make sure the eyes were open. It's all I was in, in, interested in. Yeah. Are the eyes open? Is it right? Yeah, fine. Next shot. If it wasn't, that file was deleted immediately. So anything that was on that card was one of. Yeah. Great to print, no messing yeah. around, and and I think there's a great deal of benefit in doing that. And and uh, although I do admit I, I got it wrong on two two frames in 1314, and and that's unacceptable. It, it is, but th that doesn't include the, the the eight shots that you took on a camera that had no card. Oh, God. Yeah, so how many shots? I mean, at a social event, how many shots, Simon, would you shoot per couple? My at an event, my goal, what Martin's what saying is, makes perfect sense for the event that we did. Yeah. Um, that because we were giving away the pictures for free, um, people didn't get to choose what they, you know, they had their, the picture sure. was taken and they were given what was Yeah, taken. what they got, yeah. Um, and if they didn't like it, well, tough. Tough, it's yeah. Free. Um, at an event where I'm making sales, yeah. I don't want to be in a position where I've only got one picture. No. I really want my customers not to buy just one picture. I want them to buy three pictures minimum. Yeah. And so what I would do is at a, a, a social event, I would normally have a, a selection of eight or ten pictures okay. um, per couple. Wow. So that um, how many poses, Sai? How many? Rather than talk about pictures, how many different poses are we talking? About? Again, I I would normally have um, sort of uh, probably four mm. poses, four or five. So yeah, are they um, a mixture of full length, uh, half yeah. length, and close-ups? Yeah. Um, if you're talking about um, Generic events, not green screen. No, yes. just dinner dances or balls. Yeah, and... that, that sort of thing. Then yes, I I, I would mix in um, everything from sort of head and shoulder shots through <clears> to <throat> full length, assuming that it was fitting for the um, for the event. Uh, before you go back, Alex, could you go back one frame a minute? Because there's just something that's quite useful for people here on the one one slide. Yeah, this is this is a good example of where. This is a, a, a portrait of one of the board of trustees of HIFA, my very dear friend Henry Dalal, who's actually in London. Um, he's, a, he, he's from Persia, Iran, as they call it. Um, he's photographed Her Majesty the Queen and, and recently done a numerous books on, on, uh, on, on the horse in life. And the, the, the latest one was um, celebrating Her Majesty's Jubilee. But it, this is short lit, so I'm lighting as you look at it from camera left. Lighting uh, into the side of the face, furthest from the lens. And if you look at the little green screen drop in at the right hand side of the frame that you guys are looking at, you can see the shadow behind Henry's left shoulder at camera right because I want to have a modicum of lighting control in his face. I don't want to light him flat. It's not good for him, it's not good for me. Yeah. And, and yet, you look at the picture and that is keyed straight out. Yeah. That is that what I found incredible. It keyed yeah. straight out without any trouble at all. And you can also see, as Simon mentioned, how creased the backdrop was. Mm. We, and, was and this was after it hanging for five days. Yeah. 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 So you go mm. to the right-hand side of that, that thing, and you can see the shadow behind his left shoulder. Yeah. And, uh, uh, the other way, on the green one. On the green one. Oh, so yeah, at the back of it, it's corner, and you can see, see a bit of shadow there. And the green screen software just did not have any issue oh, at all. Mm. So... 
you know, yeah. and I wanted to do, and this is a good example of um, how you can do a certain amount of corporate stuff. Mm. Um, and, and, and really, it's about maximizing your sales. You know, okay, yeah. we're here doing an event tonight. We can also do your corporate portraiture in the same setup, drop whatever. We could have had a, a logo at the camera left. We could have yeah. done anything we did. Well, we, we did. did. Yeah. We did. We've got the, the, we've got the HEPA logo. Yeah. yeah the so does the photo key allow you to import logos and. You know, yeah. This image um, is set up, there are effectively three layers. We've got the uh, background layer, which is the, the picture of the yeah. Burj Khalifa. Um, we've got the foreground layer, which is Henry. And then in front of that, we have got an overlay. And I can have any number of overlays okay. um, set up. And it's a very, very easy thing to do is to be able to swap the overlays over. Yeah. Um, because what Martin would do is, bless him, um, he would photograph, I'd get a card that's got maybe um, eight or ten people sat on the motorbike. Yeah. Then we'd have a portrait with yeah. a, a, a corporate shot like this one. Yeah. And then there would be uh, maybe four or five more people on the motorbike. Yeah. And I knew that whenever I got a portrait like this, I had to swap the borders over. And, and in fact, I had to swap the whole setup over, and it's very, very quick to do. Okay, now we we haven't talked much about the ideal lens for this kind of job. What what do you use for this for dinner dancing? Oh, <laughs> Martin, do you want to take that one? No, it's funny. <laughs> I, mean, um, I I um, I would prefer using a prime lens. I'm sure for for a number of reasons, but Sometimes the space that you have available yeah. um, is conducive to that. Yeah. Um, so you you know you're really into a short zoom, maybe something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. I think which we, is exactly what we were using. It, it yeah, was a 24 to, 75 um, Nikon F2.8. Yeah, um, I was skipping, wasn't I? Sorry. I mean, I, at one point I was actually racked out. Where, wherever possible, yeah. I'd rack the lens out to 70 mil. Um, obviously, because of the compression, I, I wanted to, to give more of a feel of, of, of depth of field of separation. I didn't want to use it wide unless I absolutely had to. I would move backwards and forwards uh, in, into the walkway, the, the gangway, in fact. Yep. Um, because, you know, I'm obviously deeply concerned. That I, I actually wanted to make sure, as Simon said, that what you're shooting has some reference to the shot and, and without. Uh, you know, without any real distortion, because once you've got yeah. distortion as well, it just becomes a nightmare. But yeah, I mean, your your location is going to dictate what lens you, you're going to use. But if I was doing all all corporate, yeah, I'd have shot it on a, on a prime. Uh, yeah. But I'd also shot it on. It, it would have either been an 85 or a 105 yeah. prime lens, um, without a doubt. But um, I think with with having to do absolutely everything, the 2470 was the best choice yeah. by a long way. Yeah, that's a workhorse, I think, for any event photographer doing yeah. social events. Yeah, I I, 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 it's, it's an incredible lens. Yeah, um, I love it to death. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be without it. No, I've got a question from Barry. Can you print directly from PhotoKey? You can do. Yes. Um, we, however, didn't. PhotoKey's um, its printing is very, very good. It's, however, slow. Um, and it, it um, I needed to be able to work really, really quickly. Um, and I think there's each time you print an image in Photo Key, you've got sort of four or five keystrokes that you have to, to perform, and it was just slowing me down too much. Um, Photo Key will allow you to export an image. All I had to do is, when well, I was happy with it, press Control E. I should say, Photo Key will work in batch mode. You can set it up. If, if nothing is changing in your images, you can set up um, batch mode, so as soon as an image arrives, it will key it, and it will either export it or print it. Yeah. Um, because Martin um, was uh, altering each of the setups, I couldn't <laughs> run this in an automated manner. Hmm. Uh, I, I'm, I'm being he just wanted to keep you on your toes, Simon. Yeah, that's right, he did. That's fine. Um, and so we, we, we couldn't use it in the batch mode. Okay. So what would happen was um, I actually had Express Digital Darkroom running in the background. Mm. 
um, and it was watching a hot folder and automatically printing everything that went into that folder. Okay. So what happened was I would press when I got the image correct in Photo Key, yeah. I just press Control E yeah. to export it. Yeah. And um, Darkroom but, said, "Aha, there's a picture. I'll print it." Yeah. And so it, it may be added maybe three seconds delay. Okay. But that's only on the first image because then everything after that you're working within the printer's buffer. Oh, okay. Um, so and that that worked really really well. Yeah. Oh, it's a great question, Barry. Because I would have thought, I mean, looking at this screen, this icon for print, that you would print from within Photo Key. I mean, as I say, you, you, you can, can do. It, yeah. It's just, it's just. I, I I found it cumbersome, and yeah. I, I I've spoken with Photo Key, and they say that in a forthcoming release, they will be addressing this um, the print mechanism within the system. Oh, okay, cool. Um, Brilliant. So before we log off, any last tips before uh, for any budding event or starting out in event photography? Let's go to Martin first, and then yeah, Simon. Okay. Right. There's a couple of things really. One, you know, w with whatever you do, um, learn to light properly. Don't don't just um, you know follow stuff off the internet and light at 45, 45, it's not necessary. Do remember that they're human beings, they're proper subjects, and any subject deserves to be lit in a sympathetic and empathetic way. That's really, really important. Secondly, um, use, use your photographic skills, but also learn to talk to people, learn to communicate, because you don't have a choice as an event person other than to sell. And, and as with every area of photography, there are good and bad photographers, and there are good and bad salespeople, yeah. and uh, and they don't necessarily get grouped together in that way. You don't, you know, you often have a great photographer as a terrible salesperson, but unfortunately, an event guy needs to be pretty good at doing both. So, so sales communication needs to be good. Learn to light properly, talk to somebody, and and um, and get the right advice on the right software for you. That's that's easy and manageable. And easy to understand. I mean, Simon taught me how to use PhotoKey very, very quickly, and, and I actually enjoyed using it. And I could see the sense in it, and it is, it is, it's very user-friendly software. And of course, you know what I will say is that you will find that uh, we will be running a number of courses on these subjects at the new academy here in Leamington Spa in the very near future. So um, brilliant. That, that's that's my bit, and, and you know. But, Thank uh, you. I, yeah, I had a question from Eileen just now, uh, asking whether Simon and Martin offer uh, training courses on event photography. So Simon, your last. Yeah. Few? I, I, my, my, yes. Um, tips for being an event photographer. Um, oh, so many. I, I've made so many mistakes. Um, uh, clue, uh, important things. Listen to other people. Talk. To other event photographers, but don't necessarily believe what they say. Um, <laughs> that, <that's, laughs> yeah. well, that, that, that doesn't come across right. <laughs> no, um, I know what you mean. mean. I know exactly what you mean. You learn from your mistakes, and also what you think right is good for you. You go with I your mean, feeling. I, 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 I'm not um, egotistical enough to think that no. the way that I work is perfect for everybody else. The way that I work works for me. If it didn't, yeah. I'd change it. I mean, um, I'm somewhat unique, as you know, because I, when I'm in the UK, I work from an ambulance. Um, it's a daft idea, but it works for me. For me, it's a perfect vehicle. Um, we just it, the important thing is listen to what people have to say, try it out, and don't be afraid to discount the idea if it doesn't work for you. Yeah. Um, the key for uh, to be a successful event photographer. Is, from my point of view, is you need to be flexible, you need to be adaptable, and you need to be able to think on your feet. Um, because you quite often turn up at an event, and you've told them that you need space that's four meters square, and they somehow equate four meters square with four foot square. Yeah. Um, and you have to be able to to, to cope. Brilliant. Just a final word, Oz, on on Heaper. Yeah. Uh, the closing date for entries is the 31st of December. 
and that is at uh, Dubai time, which is actually four hours shy of GMT. Um, you can enter four images, um, and there are four categories. All the information is on the HIPAA website. Uh, it's free. It is free to enter, and I really would encourage people to do it. Yeah. Think of what you could do with $120,000. Um, well, I, I would actually, I'm, I'm going to discourage as many people from entering as possible because <laughs> it'll increase my chances. <laughs> the, pri the prizes uh, go right the way down, first, second, and third in each category. The grand award, the high one, goes to the the, uh, the best image in the beauty of light category. But, but to actually just say that the wonderful thing, there are actually 25 places in, in all um, with the first, seconds, and thirds and the, the grand award and the other bits, okay? Now, yeah. what isn't publicized is that uh, at the behest of His Highness the Crown Prince, the, all those people will be flown out to Dubai for approximately a week to enjoy uh, an experience of Emirati culture. Uh, they'll be entertained, uh, and it will culminate in the Grand Awards ceremony yeah. towards the end of that week. Wow. Uh, it's a phenomenal experience. So that alone, uh, on top of any prize money, yeah. uh, bearing in mind the way that we fly people out there with HIPAA, is probably worth another uh, six, seven thousand dollars on top of any prize. And, and, and the rest. Yeah. And the rest. Probably. Yeah, but I'm just being conservative here. Just Thank like you. And, and it, it isn't just about money, this award. It has, no. it has laudable intentions. Yeah. And, and look through your archives, come up with something, and enter. It'll cost yeah. you nothing. You will have to identify your images. Don't be freaked out by that. Everybody has to do it, and there are good reasons for that, too. But, uh, and, and the best of luck. Brilliant. Uh, don't ask me. Don't ask my opinion, because I'm involved. You can't. You're a judge. Yes, exactly. Involved in the dream, yeah. So, uh, brilliant. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, wow. It's been a brilliant 50 minutes or so. Thank you, Martin and Simon, for sharing your knowledge, you experience, and it's been amazing. I mean, I personally learned quite a few new things. You know, every time I speak with Martin and with Simon, you know, today, this session has been absolutely wonderful. Thank you to everyone for joining in. Much appreciated, Martin, Simon. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks, Oz. Thank you very much.